So whenever we want to define a logical agent, we need to store whenever we want to define a knowledge base, knowledge base, knowledge base also data with some syntax. We need to tell the database that, I don't know, um, today is going to rain, therefore people are going to get wet, or um, uh, we possess uh, gold and uh, silver, for example. We want to tell the knowledge base things about the world. But we need to tell it those things with a language. And the way we usually specify languages is by using a syntax um, like so, where you have where you have on the left, you have symbols that are called non-terminals, like sentence, for example. Sentence, in this case, is just a symbol. This could have been called S or Duffy, anything, right? So sentence. These are non-terminals. That's what we call them, non-terminals. And these symbols can be expanded into, for example, this symbol or this symbol. Okay. Of course, the symbols have some names that make some sense. Therefore, a sentence can be expanded into an atomic sentence or a complex sentence. This thing here, this one line for sentence, for the non-terminal sentence, is called a production, a production rule. Okay, and this whole thing here is called a grammar. Now, there's a symbol atomic sentence that can be expanded into true or false or P or Q or R or basically any other letter. There's a symbol called complex sentence, which can be expanded into the symbol parentheses, the non-terminal sentence, that's a non-terminal, and then the symbol parentheses or the symbol square braces, sentence square braces, or the symbol negation and the symbol sentence, and so on and so forth. It can be expanded into all of these things. Now, when you have symbols on the left hand side, right, these guys here, these are non-terminals, meaning um, they can be expanded. And when you have symbols like true, false, P, Q, R, and, or, applies, uh, negation, all those symbols. Those do not appear on the left-hand side. Therefore, those are terminals. We're going to see how this grammar can actually be turned into a tree in which the terminals are going to be leaves and the non-terminals are going to be nodes. Now, when we're generating expressions using this grammar or when we are parsing expressions using this grammar based on an expression conforms to this grammar the operator precedence will become useful I mean it'll be useful to know which operators have precedence so here's an example instead of saying sentence atomic sentence a complex sentence I'm going to use these rules but they're going to say s a s for atomic sentence c s for complex sentence and so on and so forth so let's start by the start symbol, which is sentence. Okay, and we're going to start building a tree that will end up um, that will end up spelling out an expression. So we start with a sentence. As we can see in the rules, the sentence goes to atomic sentence or complex sentence. Let's pick complex sentence. So a sentence goes to a complex sentence. The complex sentence, if we go back to our um, rules a complex sentence can go to say parentheses sentence parentheses or negation sentence or sentence and sentence and so on and so forth right so for our tree the sentence goes to a complex sentence and I'm going to explain the complex sentence I will pick randomly or by some decision that I make I will pick complex sentence goes to sentence and sentence then for the sentence over here and the sentence over here, I'm going to expand them. This sentence, I'm going to say, hey, it'll go to a complex sentence. And this other sentence will go to an atomic sentence. Okay? So this sentence goes to, oh, I forgot the symbol complex sentence here. Complex sentence. 
Now, complex sentences goes to parentheses, sentence, parentheses. Now, I expand this sentence again into another complex sentence, and I expand this atomic sentence into the symbol R. Notice that all the terminals, I'm putting them in blue. So I expand this complex sentence. That complex sentence, according to the rules, I expand it into sentence or sentence. These sentences, I expand them into atomic sentences and those atomic sentences into the letters B and Q. And then if I just put together in order all the leaf nodes of this tree, I will get parentheses P or Q, close parentheses, and R. And this is a perfectly valid logical expression. Okay? Perfectly valid logic expression. So by, by doing trees and picking the right symbols, I can basically do any valid logical expression with this grammar here, okay? Any logical expression. So just as an exercise, you can basically determine whether these are valid symbols given the previous grammar, okay? This is something you can do and, uh, and check 